could never have dreamed that I would ever make a guitar for Steve Vai. I'm here with Alistair from Emerald Guitars, and I'd like to know a little bit of the backstory of Emerald, because you're doing things that are very different from just about anything else. So where did that all come from? Um, yeah, well, I guess I always like to do things a little bit different. Uh, you just asked my wife about that. Um, but yeah, I went to, um, to, to St. Louis in uh, 1994, and that's really when everything kind of changed. So I left from, you know, as you've been, you're here, we're in rural Ireland, we're in the, the back country of uh, nowhere. You know. A lot of fields. But uh, yeah, we're surrounded by fields. But I went off and I, I had an opportunity to go to St. Louis. And, uh, and there I got a job working for the Bud Light Formula One race boat team for Seabold Racing. And that's really where my whole world changed. And it's where I learned about carbon fiber first. I'd worked with polymers, I'd studied polymer engineering, I'd worked with fiberglass before in my father's business. But it was the first time that I worked with carbon fiber. But it wasn't really anything to do with the materials. It was the fact that I was working for somebody who was the world champion. Uh, he was the most successful powerboat racer of all time. And, uh, and it just blew me away working with somebody that had, you know, just taken something. It was kind of a, a, a unique and a niche area to work, you know, to be involved in. You know, powerboat racing isn't that popular. But he was the best in the world at it, and I just was fascinated that you know how how amazing the whole place was and what they did and the the speed of the boats and how they did things and I just came back to Ireland, filled with this enthusiasm that I wanted to do something incredible. But it was actually while I was in St. Louis in nineteen ninety four. It was actually on a flight actually between St. Louis and uh, Danville, Virginia, uh, two days before Thanksgiving in nineteen ninety four. And on that flight, I just got this idea to try and build a carbon fiber guitar. And I can remember the, just what was in my mind and that it happened. And, uh, and then 1998, I built my first guitar. So, so it took a few years to get that idea. So, onto... Yeah, it was an idea and it sat there and then the opportunity came. The time was right in, 90, in 1998. So, uh, so 25 years, um, probably almost like, yeah, it was probably just the start of the summer in, in 1998. So just right 25 years now since I started to build the first guitar. So, uh, and it's one of those things that I just, I love the process. I love the whole idea behind it. Um, didn't really know anything about how to build a guitar. Uh, I knew about carbon fiber at that stage, but not guitars. And I started to reverse engineer my own guitar and, um, and uh, slowly learned by making lots of mistakes. <laughs> and um, yeah, and just kept doing it. But I got hooked on the process, and if you talk to a lot of guitar builders, they'll tell you it's a, it's almost an addiction or a compulsion. You know, you just you love the process, you love the idea of trying to perfect something that can't be perfected. You know, there's it's like continual uh, growth, continual learning. There's no such thing as a perfect guitar. You know, it's just the right guitar for the right person, and I love that idea, and uh, and it's kind of captivated me ever since. So we we just very slowly kept building the whole thing up and um, you know it takes a long time to get known as a guitar maker especially when you're making it out of a weird material like mm. carbon fiber um, but we've managed to, to find our way in the world and um, now we're the uh, you know I think the largest guitar manufacturer in Ireland and um, we're very proud of that yeah and, and like you've always kind of built some some unusual stuff I, I see on the wall you've got a guitar that you built or a prototype for Steve Vai? Well, yes. So um, Steve Vai is the, the reason that I got into guitar in the first place. So the guitar over your left shoulder, uh, well, the left oh. shoulder, <laughs> the other <laughs> left. <laughs> uh, this guitar I bought um, about a week after hearing Steve Vai's Passion Warfare for the first time. So his music had that profound of an effect on me. I, I heard the music, it was just like, blew my mind. And uh, I went into the guitar store in Athlone and bought my first guitar. It was when I was at college down there. And uh, I, I could never have dreamed that I would ever make a guitar for Steve Vai. But when I did uh, start making guitars, um, it was quite on the early stages. And I went to, to see Steve. It was the first time I saw him play live. Uh, he played in Vicker Street. It was um, the the Ultra Zone tour, yeah. and uh, I can remember just standing there in in the crowd, and the backdrop was the album cover from the Ultra Zone, 
and uh, with the alien with the crazy guitar and then Steve came out and he was playing his Ibanez jam white jam and he was kind of dressed like the, the, the alien had this headpiece on and stuff I thought, there's something wrong with that he needs a real one so I went home and the next day I started building that guitar and at that stage I had never I, I made a lot of guitars but none of them had left, left my possession I had never felt that a guitar was good enough to give to somebody uh, or to sell to somebody and, uh, and there I find myself building a guitar for Steve I but it was a com compulsion you know just like I say with guitars it's not always just about what you should do it's what you have to do mm -hmm. and um, so I set about trying to build the craziest guitar in the world and I spent all my time learning how to build acoustic guitars and this was an electric guitar so not only is it like you know I'm building a guitar for Steve Vai but it's the first electric guitar that I was ever making so, uh, so lo and behold, I completed the ultra guitar, and uh, uh, when that left my possession was the first guitar that left my hands and went to somebody. And uh, so, guitar number one, or maybe minus one, uh, went to Steve I. So, Alistair took it upon himself to make this guitar for me, and here it is. And it's the it's the ultra zone guitar. It's really very cool. My hero. He's still using it. I've seen videos. Steve of played hundreds of shows around the world um, with that guitar, and you know, I think whenever I give it to him at the start, uh, it's the ultra, the ultra zone tour had finished, and uh, it didn't really have a place in anything that he was doing, so it, it hung on the wall, and uh, by his own admission, he said he kind of thought, well, I couldn't really even play this on stage. You know, it, it couldn't be playable. And, uh, and then a little bit further down the line, um, another tour was coming up. I think it was in maybe 2011, 2012. And, uh, and he decided he wanted to take it out on tour. And uh, tried it, loved it. And we brought it back here and did a little bit of work on it. Added some lasers because it wasn't crazy enough already. And what's really cool is, I got lights in it. You get that in your camera? Yeah. And it's really easy to play, you know? I mean, it sits, it sits really nicely, you know, the way it, it's got this horn, you know? And um, yeah, we actually, we made a, we took a molding off that original guitar and then made a, a small run of um, replicas of it, uh, which is uh, what's hanging over there. That's a replica that I kept for myself, but didn't get around to the, actually finishing it. So someday I'll put the strings on that one. But um, yeah, so there's uh, so there's his original one, and there's about uh, ten other um, ultrasound ultrasound replicas out there uh, that come in their own little spaceship case and everything. And it's kind of it's the coolest thing ever. But what it is 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 that inspiration that drove me on to other things. Um, you know, Steve Vai was the reason I picked up a guitar for the first time. Building that guitar for him um, connected me into a lot of other great musicians. Um, I suppose give myself a, it, it gave me a little bit of uh, connection where I was unknown so it was a, a, a fantastic thing to do early in my career as well as being like the most fulfilling thing in, in life you know um, and then other unusual guitars came off it like the the uh, Bahamut guitar that I built for Lee Hom the, the Asian artist and uh, and some other crazy pieces in between so I'm kind of known as the guy that's made all these crazy, bizarre guitars, but... Um, and even your standard guitars could still be considered crazy, like from a traditional standpoint. Well, yeah. Carbon I mean, fiber is, is... Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's an unusual material and we built some unusual guitars like the, mm. the Chimeras and the Synergy Heart guitars and that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's all about making music, you know, and even the craziest guitars in the world, like the the ultra guitar it looks unplayable but it's a very playable great sounding instrument steve Vai would never pick up a guitar to play it if he couldn't play it you know so uh, so i love that concept of something looking almost unplayable but being very playable you know um so uh yeah so that's a that was a, a really early start point but uh but it was one of those things that this business is not easy mm -hmm. and uh, I, i've seen a lot of people start with passion and, and i've Field because it's so hard um, but I think it was having some of those memories uh, and the enjoyment along the way you know kept us getting through the tough times um, to get to a stage where it's you know now at with uh, you know 30 plus employees and, um, and this factory, and is new huge. factory 
yeah we've, we've got a great factory that we've just finished developing here and uh, so yeah we've got big plans for the future mm, like the, it, it's so impressive what you've done uh, to go from from like not being uh, convinced to even give a guitar away uh, to five guitars a day that's yeah it's a tremendous uh, achievement of what you've done well thank you yeah it uh, it sometimes blows me away and uh, just walking through the factory every day I'm, I'm very proud of uh, what we've achieved and I, I say we because you know I, I come up with the designs but it's really it's what the guys down there do building those guitars every day you know they, they are a team of highly skilled guys and uh, and every part of the team you know even the guys in the office and the guys that are doing our marketing and our sales and you know we've a great bunch of people here and we're, we're very proud to do it where we do it you know we're in a very unlikely position in the mm -hmm. countryside uh, in rural Donegal building the most technologically advanced guitars in the world um, you expect that to happen in a you know an industrial area in a city but uh, we're proud to, do, proud to do it here and you know just looking out the big window right in front of me here it uh, that's kind of what is in our guitars you know it's that's the inspiration our countryside and our you know that bit of beauty and somehow everything that's around you and the people that surround you makes its way into that guitar and um, it's really hard to really quantify but I think somehow when people play the guitars they feel that you know you can I'm sure you felt it you know you just, there's something special in some guitars you nearly feel the love that's gone into building them and the passion has gone into building them you can tell that someone cared yeah well, that was cool. A huge thank you to Alistair for doing that interview with us and for doing a full 40 minute factory tour video, which is on the channel currently. It's probably somewhere here. And uh, also stay tuned for a full in-depth review of an Emerald Virtuo. Very interesting guitar, kind of half acoustic, half electric. Very much worth sticking around for. So subscribe for that. And in fact, I'm going to play you out with a little demo of it from that video. So, um, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>